my question is, have you heard of the problem of divine hiddenness? Yes. Um, so, uh, I guess as background, um, the problem divi of divine hiddenness is essentially a person who is a non-resistant non-believer, somebody who mm -hmm. would answer the question that you proposed, mm -hmm. if, if God did exist and you knew it, would you believe in him and serve him? Mm -hmm. um, the answer to that would be yes, but they cannot find themselves convinced that he does, okay. no matter how hard they try. Sure. I would count myself among that number. I was raised um, Christian church, Christian school, mm -hmm. very Christian community, um, and yet I find myself a fairly confirmed agnostic, mm -hmm. um, despite quite a bit of research. Um, so how do you reconcile a omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent God who desires a relationship with his creation, um, not being able to, well, okay, maybe that presupposes, but um, it, it appears to me that there should be no barrier that I would be able to place in my own heart that an omnipotent God would not be able to surmount. And the fact that he has the desire to surmount any barrier, it seems hard to reconcile. How would you reconcile that? Okay, yeah, good question. Uh, Snellenberg has written much on this, the hiddenness of God. There are many different ways to address this issue, but let me just take one or two ways. Um, it could be that God doesn't want you to become a believer right now. Let me give you an example of someone very prominent. Uh, there's a friend of mine who lives in Nebraska who had, he's a Christian, Christian apologist, and he had another friend that um, wasn't a Christian and he wanted this guy to be a Christian, so he actually gave him my book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. And the guy said, I'm not reading that, that was written by a Christian. Well, yeah, of course, a Christian believes it, so he's going to write it. But they lost touch. Ten years later, my friend sees this guy, and he's a Christian. And he goes, what happened? He goes, I've been watching Jordan Peterson. <laughs> and Jordan Peterson led me to Jesus. Jordan Peterson's not a Christian. And the reason that he's been watching Jordan Peterson is because he considered Jordan Peterson kind of an honest broker. Like he doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a horse in this race. He's just trying to find the truth himself. And Jordan Peterson, being a non-Christian, helped lead this guy to Jesus when a Christian couldn't do it. So it's possible that maybe you're in that same position. Maybe you have people in your life and your circle of influence is going to expand maybe years from now to the point that it's big enough where God goes, okay, mm -hmm. What's your name again? Luke. 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 You're ready now. Now, I'm going to reveal more of myself to you, and now you're going to be able to influence these other people in your circle that wouldn't have been there if you had become a Christian 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Yeah. The, the problem I found is that, you know, I, I get much the same answer from a lot of my Christian mm -hmm. friends who I've talked to is, you know, you know, God works in his own time. Um, many years from now, you could be a Christian. The, the problem I find with that is, like, all it takes is one person in, who is in my circumstance, who goes to their grave without, without finding the truth and love of Christ, for that to seemingly fall apart, in hey, my Luke, opinion. Hey, I'm, Luke, I'm not saying this is the case with you, but I'm saying it's the case in general with humanity. We all have a deceitful heart. We might not even know why we do half the things we do. We might say we're completely open. And in the recesses of our hearts, we're not. Mm -hmm. There's something between us and the truth. And we don't really want to accept the truth. In fact, let me ask you this. What is, is your, according to what you believe, is your objection to Christianity evidence-based or something else? That's an interesting question. I'd say it was, it was probably primarily evidence-based, but, but in, in more recent reflection, it's kind of occurred to me that kind of you can't talk somebody into the faith no more than you can like talk somebody out of it. Like, 
that kind of has to be a, a more deeply felt spiritual realization. And, you know, I have all of these kind of arguments rolling around in my head and, and tons of research I've done, but ultimately it appears to me that you would have to, I would just have to have had an experience of God. And it's crazy because, you know, I grew up in the exact circumstances where that should have happened and it was happening to everyone around me and yet I got nothing. Or maybe I, I don't know, maybe I did get something and I didn't see it, but if, if I was meant to see it, I would have, I suppose. Yeah, perhaps, or maybe it hasn't happened yet. God says, Jesus says, keep knocking, keep seeking. Sometimes the process of becoming a Christian is necessary to make you a deeper person when you become a Christian. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going through these doubts and these struggles because five years from now you're going to become a Christian and then you're going to have a ministry to people who go through doubts and struggles. So just to say that, God, I haven't, you, haven't, you haven't shown me yet, so you must not exist, mm -hmm. is very presumptuous. Sure. Okay? God does work on his own time. Mm -hmm. And he's working through people like Jordan Peterson, even though Jordan Peterson, at least to this point, is not a Christian. And maybe God doesn't want him to be a Christian just yet. So I would say just be open, keep seeking. And let me say one other thing about this. Your psychology, my psychology is not going to tell us what's true, what's true outside of our skull. Mm -hmm. Our psychology can deceive us. In fact, our psychology is such that we'll actually ignore evidence for irrational reasons. Let me give you an example. There are probably people in this room that cannot get on an airplane. You're scared to death to get on an airplane. Yet you know from an evidence perspective, the safest way to get anywhere is on an airplane. You should be more afraid to get in your car than to get on an airplane because statistically, aviation is the safest way to get anywhere. Here we are allowing our psychology to overpower the evidence. Mm -hmm. Could that be the case when it comes to belief in God? Sure it could. This is why James says, he who continues to doubt is tossed to and fro as if you're on a ship in a, in a storm. And C.S. Lewis writes pretty profoundly on this. Have you read Mere Christianity? Mm -hmm. He writes pretty profoundly on this when he says, you know, there were times when I was an atheist where Christianity just looked all too true. And then there have been times when I've been a Christian when I had such severe doubts. And he said, that's where faith comes in, meaning trust, not blind faith. After you've established through reason that Christianity is true, you need to tell your doubts to get off because you've already established that it's true by looking at the evidence. And the evidence doesn't change. Your psychology can change with the weather or the bad pizza you had earlier today or the fact that your favorite football team, the Dallas Cowboys, lost, <laughs> right? Thankfully, again. Your psychology will not necessarily tell you what's true mm -hmm. about what's outside your skull. The evidence will. That's why you've got to concentrate on the evidence. Sure. All right? Thank, Thank you, you, Luke. Appreciate it.